In the city that invented the skyscraper, a 23-meter deep hole sat abandoned for 15 years, a tomb for what should have been America's tallest building. This giant crater, the foundation for a failed 610-meter mega tower, became a literal scar on Chicago's famous skyline. But today, something impossible is happening. A new skyscraper is rising, not next to the hole, but from the very bottom of it. Engineers are building on the bones of a dead project, reusing a circular foundation designed for a completely different twisting tower. So how exactly do you build a skyscraper inside a hole? To understand the incredible challenge of building in this hole, we first have to understand the ghost that haunts it. What was the Chicago Spire, and why did it leave such a massive scar on the city? Back in 2005, the world-renowned Spanish architect Santiago Calatrava unveiled a breathtaking vision. It was a 610-meter-tall, 150-floor residential tower that would have been the tallest building in the entire Western Hemisphere. Its design was unlike anything ever seen before. Inspired by the image of smoke rising from a Native American campfire, the tower was designed to twist as it rose. Each floor would rotate just over two degrees from the one below it, creating a graceful 270-degree spiral into the sky. It wasn't just for looks. The twisting shape was a brilliant engineering solution to confuse the wind, breaking up air currents to keep the super slender tower stable. In 2007, work began. But just as the foundation was laid, the 2008 global financial crisis hit. The project's main lender, Anglo-Irish Bank, was near collapse, and all construction stopped dead. The dream was over, leaving only a hole. For 15 years, that was the end of the story. A massive hole filled with water, a monument to a failed dream. But in 2024, engineers faced a monumental task. They weren't just building a skyscraper, they were performing a resurrection. And the first step was to deal with a 15-year-old flood. Before any construction could begin, the team had to empty the hole. Over the years, the abandoned foundation, known as a cofferdam, had filled with an enormous amount of water. Crews began a massive pumping operation, removing roughly 11.4 million liters of water from the site. That's enough water to fill more than four and a half Olympic-sized swimming pools. But it wasn't just water they had to worry about. A major city sewer line was found running directly through the site, which had to be carefully and completely relocated before any other work could proceed. Only after the hole was completely dry and essential city services were rerouted could the real engineering work begin. This dewatering process was critical to creating a safe and stable environment for the immense construction project that was about to unfold deep below street level. Now came the central challenge. The new project, named 400 Lakeshore, called for two separate rectangular towers. But the foundation left behind was a circular pattern of supports designed for a single twisting skyscraper. The footprints didn't match at all. Demolishing the old foundation and starting from scratch would have been incredibly expensive and time-consuming. So, the engineers devised a brilliant and sustainable solution. They would build on the bones of the old spire. They developed what they called a very aggressive reutilization strategy with the goal of reusing 88% of the existing foundation supports, called caissons. Caissons are massive concrete pillars that are drilled deep into the ground until they hit solid bedrock, transferring the building's immense weight safely to the earth. First, a complex assessment was needed. Engineers had to test the integrity of the 15-year-old caissons to determine if they were still strong enough to support a new skyscraper. Based on these tests, some of the original 34 caissons were approved for reuse as they were, some had to be modified or relocated, and some were abandoned completely. To support the new tower's different shape, new caissons also had to be drilled into the bedrock, 37 meters below the ground, weaving a new grid of support in and around the old one. This incredible feat of adaptive reuse saved a huge amount of time, money, and materials, proving that even the remains of a failed project can become the bedrock for a new success. With the underground pillars in place, the new tower needed a solid base to sit on. 
This is called a mat or raft foundation, and it's a single, massive slab of steel and concrete that spreads the building's weight evenly across all the caissons. To work properly, it had to be created in one continuous session. In March 2024, the team began what was called the Marathon Pour. For 12 hours straight, a fleet of over 250 concrete trucks arrived on site, one every two minutes without a single break. They poured over 4,000 tons of concrete, which is nearly 9 million pounds. That's enough concrete to lay a sidewalk for 14 kilometers. This massive volume of concrete was poured over a dense web of reinforcing steel that had been assembled at the bottom of the hole over the previous weeks. This steel lattice weighed approximately 282 tons, the same as about 155 cars. This perfectly coordinated, non-stop operation ensured that the entire foundation would cure into a single, monolithic piece, creating an incredibly strong base for the 72-story skyscraper that would soon rise from it. Once the massive mat foundation was set at the bottom of the 23-meter deep hole, the final stage of the foundation work could begin, erasing the scar for good. Construction of the new tower's central concrete core started in the middle of the new foundation, as the core began to climb upwards, the vast space around it inside the old cofferdam was gradually backfilled. Trucks brought in sand and other materials, much of it excavated from other parts of the construction site and slowly filled the void. As the core rose higher, the ground level around it rose too. By August 2025, the hole that had defined the site for 15 years was almost completely filled. Soon after, the new structure passed street level, and for the first time since 2008, the infamous Chicago Spire Hole was gone forever, replaced by the beginnings of a new skyscraper. But resurrecting a skyscraper from a hole isn't just an engineering problem, it's a financial and political one. So how did this new project succeed where the spire so spectacularly failed? The new two-tower development, 400 Lakeshore, is a massive undertaking with an estimated total cost of around $1 billion. To get started, the developer, Related Midwest, secured about $500 million in financing for the first tower. But unlike the Spire, this project faced intense local scrutiny. The first design, proposed in 2018, was rejected by city officials who had concerns about the tower's height and the inclusion of a hotel. The architects were sent back to the drawing board. A revised, shorter design was finally approved in 2020, but the project was then delayed again by the global pandemic. Finally, after overcoming all these hurdles, construction on the 267-meter North Tower officially began in 2024, with the completion date set for early 2027. The second, 233-meter tower will only start after the first is finished and occupied, depending on market conditions. Today, the hole is gone. In its place, a new gateway to Chicago is rising, with crews pouring a new concrete floor every three days. The glass curtain wall that will form the building's skin is already being installed on the lower levels, climbing steadily behind the concrete structure. The story of this site is a powerful tale of failure, resilience, and incredible engineering. It shows how a 15-year-old scar, a symbol of a global financial collapse, can become the very foundation for a new and powerful symbol of a city's strength. If you were amazed by the engineering it took to build a skyscraper from a hole in the ground, make sure to like this video and subscribe to The Impossible Build. Let us know in the comments what you think about the story of the Chicago Spire and its successor. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't miss our next dive into the world's most incredible engineering projects.